Well, hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your body, your health from where you are right now to being unstoppable. And in Melbourne, Australia today, it is Father's Day, Sunday, and it's a gorgeous day weather-wise outside. I've spent some time out there with the kids. And so today I wanted to talk to you about what the meaning of being a dad is to me, but I also wanted to give you an update as to COVID here because it's, I don't know what it's being viewed like on the other parts of the world. I'm sure what we're doing in Melbourne, Victoria here is being carefully watched by other people around the world as to how our strategies are working, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, We are still under the longest, harshest restrictions of anywhere else in the world, and it's, uh, it's tough. And so today was the day that they were announcing the roadmap out. So we were supposed to be in a six-week lockdown, just another six weeks until the 13th of uh, September. So that's about another week from now. But uh, we knew that the numbers are just not low enough for them to open up again. And so today they've just formally said, yes, we are not opening up again in two weeks' time. We're going to remain shut for another two weeks after that, and then we're going to open up certain industries and look at kind of see how that goes for two weeks look at then opening up uh, the next uh, bout of appropriate uh, industry to be opened etc etc so for me personally and what i uh, work with uh, clients in my studio and stuff it seems very unlikely that i'll be working with people inside my studio again this year which will mean we'll be shut by then, it'll be shut by for nine months that we'll have not been able to have people in here. Um, Hoping that in another month, uh, we'll be able to uh, work with people outside. So at least we can work with some people outside uh, doing our training and stuff out there. Um, So in the meantime, it means uh, doing all the coaching that we're doing. And... uh, (laughs) Just trying to keep people inspired and motivated and on track with their, with their health and wellness. Um, it's a disaster, the, the way that things have been managed here. Uh, the, the government is not really, even though they say, yeah, the buck stops with them kind of thing. There's, there's uh, reviews and um, inquiries going on at the moment. They, we're in this position because the hotel quarantine situation was completely botched. And that allowed us to get up to over, well, about 800 cases a day, which doesn't seem like much, but keep in mind the population of Melbourne compared to other parts of the world. And uh, it's, it's quite huge if you extrapolated that. Well, it's hard to extrapolate them out because if you have a, bit, a way bigger population, it spreads a lot quicker because you're more, conf- uh, pardon me, more confined together. But it's, um, it's been handled horribly. And we have to continue to endure it for at least another three weeks before there's any, any change. They have said that they can increase the amount of exercise up to two hours a day from one hour a day outside now. So that will be, uh, make it a little bit easier for people and they're going to ease some other small uh, restrictions. Uh, but the devil is in the detail and today they were just uh, announcing some broad stuff. And, of course, it will change at any moment. If they see the numbers starting to climb up again, they'll just shut everything down again. So um, it looks like, uh, we'll, I think, we'll still be shut down by Christmas. They're working on this so that we can be open by Christmas, but I can't see it happening, to be honest. And I think it's very unlikely that my kids will be going back to school this year uh, as well, So, as in the classroom. Uh, they'll continue with the, the homeschooling, is my belief. Uh, there's, they're going to review it at the start of November, but there's only effectively four weeks of school left. Um, so I think that they just won't, won't do it because it's, uh, people are going to push back at this and they're going to be out and the, uh, the virus is going to continue spreading. I think what will perhaps happen is that people just stop going to get tested. So if they have less data to report, the numbers have to come down, don't they? So then they'll open it up. So I think that there's a risk that that could happen. But... Let's see, as far as it affects me personally, it's exactly what I predicted would happen. 
and uh, I've planned for uh, the long haul. Uh, so we'll just see, we'll see. So let's talk about Father's Day because the role of a dad is very, very important. And that's not to suggest that the role of a mum isn't equally or more important. Uh, but given that I'm a dad, I wanted to talk to you about my perspective about being a dad and what, what that means. Because you know, we take on these roles in life and we're not given a manual, even though there's lots of books about, uh, written about parenting and that kind of stuff, where we don't know naturally what it is that we need to, uh, to be doing and, and whether we're ready for it. And um, I've been talking to a couple of people saying that uh, when I got to that age where you know, society says you should have kids, I wasn't ready for it. Uh, but my, uh, my wife at the time, she's now my ex-wife, but we still get on really well, um, I, I, she really wanted kids and she was getting to the age where it was going to become more challenging. She was 33. If we were going to have a couple of kids, a couple of years apart, uh, you know, that was going to make it uh, potentially more risky for her. Uh, so we didn't want to do that. So we ended up, we, we made a start and 15 years ago. And now I've got two beautiful girls, uh, 15 and 13 years old, Emily and Olivia. And... I guess I, I, my fear was that I had never been around babies or kids before. A lot of other people that I knew, uh, you know, they just seemed to know what to do, maybe. I don't know. That's just the perception. Uh, but because I'd never been around them, I just didn't know. I didn't know how to hold a baby, didn't know about the feeding, changing the nappies, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but... Uh, when you are thrown into a situation, uh, you just have to adapt. And that's what I did. And I fell into the role uh, really quite easily. And I think more naturally than their mum did, actually. And uh, I thrived on it. And I made the decision pretty early in the kid's life where, I, like, I had a really good relationship with my dad. He's very loving and everything. But I don't remember doing anything with him. And I didn't want my girls to be like that. I wanted to be a dad with a difference. And... I didn't want to do what most dads did, and that was leave it up to the woman mainly to take care of the child and everything. So uh, when the, um, Emily was four, Olivia was two, uh, that was around the same time that I wanted to make the career change, start opening my business, and so that's what we did. So um, Angela, that's the girl's mum, she went back to work full time. I started running the business, uh, part-time slash full-time kind of thing, working on it when the kids were sleeping and stuff. And uh, I was the full, I was a full-time stay-at-home dad, and I loved the, I loved the role. I did all the things that a mum would normally do. I just did them as through a dad's eyes. <laughs> and uh, a, I think life, life is so short, and I didn't want to miss out on a whole bunch of the, you know, the different opportunities to see the kids walking and uh, doing those early things with them. That uh, once they're gone, they're gone. Like you only get those first things once. And I, I didn't want to miss out on those. And I think a lot of dads do miss out on, on things. And I just didn't want to be that person. So uh, I made them like completely change my life so that that wouldn't be the case. And each day, I think, how can I be a better role model, be a better dad? What can I be doing differently? How can I give more? How can... I help impart my wisdom, knowledge onto the kids so that they can then advance faster than I have in my life. And I think that's the greatest gift to, uh, to give somebody, not the money, but to give the, the knowledge and the wisdom and the resourcefulness in how do you get what you want out of life? How do you get to that place? And even there are, uh, though they're only 13 and 15, um, I, I, I kind of wish I had a dad like me so that I could get further in life quicker. And I mean, there's, n there's nothing that I won't talk to the kids about. Um, I think I'm, I'm very open, I'm very loving, and it's just part of life's journey. I mean, the kids teach me things. And I think, wow, okay, yeah, I didn't know that, or, uh, you know, I need to adjust my parenting style based on, on this. Uh, so that's what I do. Uh, learning about the kids, learning more about their personalities uh, and um, getting to that place where 
I, I know how to communicate with each one of them a little bit differently and what drives them and how to support them and uh, help them in ways that, uh, you know, just really support whatever it is that they want to attain in their life, their hopes, their dreams, all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's what, what life's about. And um, I think uh, days like today make me stop and reflect about uh, how am I going in that role? What could I be doing better? How can I be a better dad? What are the things that uh, I can do uh, to help them grow more and, and do more and be more and, and just be happy, you know, be happy in themselves because I was not a happy child when I was their age growing up. I just was, I was not a happy, happy camper. And uh, I think if you can give kids the problem solving skills and uh, the, the environment and the support and the love so that they can uh, be happy and do all those things that they want to, then I think that's really exciting. I think that's a really exciting thing uh, to be able to do. And um, I think the other thing as a dad, uh, this is going to sound a little bit weird maybe, but I mean a dad, a dad is only a dad because that there's a mother involved as well. And uh, I think often uh, mums are, are not given the credit for the amazing job that they do. And even though the girl's mum and I aren't together anymore, we still get on really well together. And she's helped me become a better dad by virtue of the role that she's played. I mean, we haven't been together for, well, coming on eight years now, I think, but uh, next year will be eight years. Uh, but we, we still uh, co-parent, even though I have the, the girls slightly more than she does, there are things that she brings to the girls that I could never bring just because men and women are different and we talk, we're different people as well, different personalities, different skill sets. Like their mum is, like she's super intelligent. Like she's, she's great at helping them with the schoolwork and um, especially maths and those technical uh, type subjects. She's really great at that, uh, that type of stuff. And she's just got skills that I don't have and vice versa. Uh, and I think women really help make a man better. And the relationships that I've had, not that there's been a lot of them, but the relationships that I have had have all helped shape me better as a man and have helped shape me better as a dad. And I'm grateful for all of those as well. And I think that often gets unsaid. And so today is a day to reflect on all things about being a dad and how to do it better. And I think one of the other things that I'm really passionate about, because I see this come through my coaching with my clients, I see so many women that are, are struggling with their, their health, their wellness and everything. And I don't care who you are, what you say, it might be different in your household, but I, it doesn't matter how much we like to think that we've advanced, women still pick up the majority of what's going on in a household. Uh, whether that's uh, just a couple, uh, they do it. Well, whether there's kids involved, they certainly pull more of their share of the load than the man does. And I see this in uh, the housework. Women do most of the housework. Uh, when it comes to the, the cooking, the food, they do most of that. When it comes to the kids' homework, they do most of that. When it comes to dealing with the emotional crisis in the house, whether that's with the kids, women do most of that. Uh, the women also do most of the uh, looking after the bills, the saving, that kind of thing, uh, planning outings, planning social gatherings, planning parties, doing all that, uh, and then also um, helping, I don't mean this in a um, derogatory way, but massaging the ego of their, their male partners as well, or female partners for that matter, um, so women have to do a lot. You do a lot and I don't know how you do it. And I've been coaching a number of clients lately that are, are basically new mums and say within the last 12 months and that sense of loss of body and uh, you having to be a constant servant for the child with breastfeeding and feeding and changing and everything. Most men, including myself, can't even relate to that. I mean, I can relate to being the stay-at-home full-time dad uh, but... I can't relate to the breastfeeding or 
having nine months of, my, of the, the year, my body just completely changed every day. And all of a sudden I'm carrying this extra maybe 12, 15 kilos around with me. And then it comes out and now I've got this saggy skin left and I feel bloated and I feel horrible and, and everything. And not, not to mention all the hormonal change that um, uh, you ladies go through as well. So um, I feel that my job as a man, as a dad, is to help other dads and partners really support their partners in their health and fitness journey. Because a lot of the time, given everything that I just said, a lot of people have no energy at the end of the day. There's no energy left because they've had to do all this other stuff. And uh, often what can then happen at night, the women's gone through all that and they've had a really bad day and then the, the partner says, hey, it's time for us to have sex. Maybe not in those words, but that's essentially what it means. And like, what? Okay, you've gone off to work all day and yeah, you might be tired too and you've done this and you provide for the house and et cetera, et cetera. But I've had to do all this. And uh, uh, often there's no time left over for them to be able to look after their own body. And, and so many women don't feel great about their, their bodies and even though you know, the partner may not care exactly what you look like, it's really important to the person that they feel good about who they are and what it is that they're accomplishing in their life. And I think a, a lot of women can feel like they've given it up for their, uh, you know, for their children, their career and all that kind of stuff. I know that there are some things changing and COVID is helping uh, women stay in their careers longer because of being able to have way more flexible working arrangements from home, etc. But um, we've still got a long way to go, I think. And so I think uh, when I have conversations with my uh, male clients, I'm really encouraging them to support their partners uh, better and to help them achieve what it is that they want to achieve for their bodies as well. Because men, I think, are naturally more selfish. And I don't know why that is, uh, but I think uh, women will tend to sacrifice everything ahead of uh, you know, themselves, whereas a man will do it up to a point and then say, no, nah, it's my turn now. Uh, so, yeah, I think dads out there, you're doing a great job, I'm sure. But let's focus on what can we do better as dads? How can we be a better dad? How can we be a better partner to our partners so that we can support them in what they want to get out of their life as well? I think that's really important, really important. And that's not to say you do it at your expense, uh, but I think it's a, a really important part of the relationship to make sure that you support them in their quest. And I mean, I'm not in a relationship at the moment, but I can relate to um, my last relationship uh, with Cherie and she, like beautiful woman, and for oh, oh, quite some time, one of the things that I wanted her to, to do was really follow her passion, follow her dreams. Because she's you know, doing a, like a, no disrespect to what she's doing, but she wouldn't mind me saying this, the kind of a dead end job that's pretty boring and uninspiring and she's not really doing what she wants to do. And so I remember us having a number of conversations about you know, what really drives you, because that's really important, was really important to me uh, as a partner to make sure that she's getting everything that she wants out of life. And for me to support her and encourage her in that, that process. And she said, well, she started uh, studying uh, early education, like, um, you know, teaching. And I said, well, you know, what stopped you? And it was, you know, like things happening in her, um, in her marriage and, and stuff at the time when she made those decisions. And, and uh, she kind of just wished that she'd already... Sorry, that she, she'd wish that she'd kept on doing it. And I said, why didn't you? And she said, well, you know, this, that, this and that happened and um, it probably wasn't the right time and then we moved and then it was too much pressure financially to do it, etc., etc." And I said, here's the thing. I said, I would feel like... And because I then said to her, so when do you think you'll do it? 
And he said, oh, maybe in you know, five years, seven years, 10 years or something. I said, okay, what's stopping you from doing it now? Oh, I couldn't do it now. And I said, why not? Oh, because of this and this. And I said, okay. I said, so here's the thing. I said, I would see my self failing as your partner if I didn't keep pushing you to achieve what it is that's so, so important to you. If that's your deepest passion, then why don't you just go and do it? To start, you can do it part time. We talked about all the different options. Anyway, after a number of different conversations, uh, she enrolled and she's now doing it. And we're not together anymore, but she's still uh, doing her teaching degree and uh, it's going to take her longer, but she wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for me encouraging her because her previous partner uh, was more selfish and it's like, well, if you do that, where's your time for me kind of thing? Whereas I come from a different perspective and say, but this is your dream. This is your passion. I would feel so, so bad if she never got to that point of being able to you know, pursue her, her, her passion because of something that I was stopping her from doing. Uh, so I think it's really important for us as dads, as our partners, to make sure that we support the people within our household to make sure that they can achieve everything that they want to achieve uh, because a life's too short. So there's my Father's Day message. Have a great day wherever you are in the world. I know it's not Father's Day everywhere, uh, but it is here in Australia. So if you're in Australia and you're listening and you're dad, then happy Father's Day. You're doing a great job. I hope you have a fantastic day celebrating with your family, with your kids, and much love to you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.